Hey there everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode of Let's Chill, No Man's Sky. So, last time, I think we were doing some of the Artemis stuff. We should be able to finish that now, right? I think. Alone amidst the stars. That is the mission I'm doing, right? Mm, that's the wrong menu. Visit the life form and locate your stuff on the star chart. Alrighty, so yeah, that's what we were doing. We uh, So hopefully everybody's been doing well. I've been solely getting used to the new recording schedule I have to give myself. On my days off from work, I end up recording at least four or five episodes a day. And I have two days off. So two days out of every eight, meaning I work six days straight and then I work or uh, I record two of those eight days that I have total. And I go right back to working six more days. But the reason why I record eight is so that that way, if I record anywhere between eight to 10 episodes, I'll always have the episodes done for the entire week. Now that doesn't always end up happening. Usually the first day I end up too sleepy to record anything. So I end up recording maybe only four or five episodes and then I edit them the night before they actually go up. And it's been working out so far really well. I've been actually able to edit one episode a day get it uploaded overnight and then just upload it the next day like actually get it posting the next day but other than that the new job isn't that bad it's a lot of cooking but it's not that bad what makes it bad is the staff that i'm working with sweet jesus are they bad they are disrespectful they do not care about whose management who isn't they just kind of do their own thing. And I get it, you know, if you've been there for 10 years, you know, you think you don't have to answer to anyone, especially if they're new, but if they're hired to be your boss, they're hired to be your boss. There's a reason why you're not the boss. Like, if you get salty over, hey, someone that's been here 10 years, and, you know, if, it, if they've been here 10 years and they actually work hard and do their things right, then definitely they should, you know, be promoted but yeah no it, it's pretty bad i'll explain in a second <clears throat> as i approach the life form they spit into their own palm and bow to me they only issue a single noise it is unclear if artemis's translator is working a spit and bow to them as well death death oh hmm calm down buddy life form barks small okay I spit and bow, emulating their strange motions. They scream, withdraw a dagger at their holster, and slice their own palm open. They laugh at me, offering their dagger. Uh, you need to calm down, buddy. Interlopers should calm down instead. Interlopers should learn manners. Death, death. Okay, if spitting and bowing didn't work, should I headbutt you? I don't know, I headbutt the life form. They do not move, they do not register any pain. They just stare at me for a while. Eventually, they laugh. Ah, amusing. Ask your question, pathetic interloper. I shall answer. I ask the life form to decode Artemis' star chart and provide a location, or a route to their location. What is this nonsense? This location does not exist or the Viking would know. Alright, ask if they could have made a mistake. The Viking does not respond well to the insinuation that they may have made a mistake in analyzing the star chart data, shouting, DEATH! DEATH! I apologize and leave. Um. Hmm. Artemis, my dude. Uh, yo, we might, we might have a slight problem. Okay. But yeah, so as I was saying about work, I understand if you've been there, you know, 10 plus years, you should be promoted and well out of there. Unless you are doing something wrong or you know, the way you act isn't appropriate. And that's pretty much what's going on. All right, let's call it. <clears throat> there you are. I found high ground, I think. When you arrive, I'll fire my multi-tool into the air to mark my location. What's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? I tell Artemis the locals could not decipher their star chart. The alien even went so far as to claim those stars did not exist. That's impossible. I can't have traveled that far from Charter Space. You found my ship. 
How did you get there, buddy? As I speak, the line begins to crackle with interference. Artemis looks up at the stars with panic. The stars! <sighs> they all just set me their charge. Believe down in. How is this possible? What is happening to me? I need to get out of here. I need to. <sighs> it is quiet at first, but there is an unmistakable growing steadily louder with each passing moment. A sound beneath the words. A sound as if glass could scream. Uh, ask Arvis what's going on. They're coming for me. I can see them. Smell them. I discovered glyphs for a portal traveler. A gateway between worlds. I thought it would lead me to another of our kind. But now, I don't even know if the voice was real. The path lay collapsed while I was still inside. I found this place in the darkness. I thought perhaps it was a planet. I... I was so wrong. I... I can see their faces. I... There are seeds of glass within there. As for the glyphs. They're gone. My data fragmented in them. I just wanted to discover worlds. I just wanted to find other travelers. I didn't... To be alone anymore. Sixteen. Warn your face in. Please, not yet. I'm not... The signal cuts off. As it crackles into oblivion, I hear another name through the static. Apollo. Register the ID. A frequency for Apollo has been added to my hollow terminus contacts. Oh no. Ghost in the machine. Oh! <laughs> Ghost in the show, my boy. Right, where's another one? I know there's another one around here somewhere. Where's the hollow terminus? Where? Where is it detected? Oh, it's over to my left. I'm, I'm really blind. Let's go. Okay, I'll land on the hollow terminus. That'll work, I guess. Uh, let's do this. Hollow terminus activated. Multiple signal sources available. The tower hosts a powerful transmitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tune into Apollo. Let's see what we can find. Signal match detected. Let's talk to you, Apollo. Ooh. You have a cool head, my guy. <clears throat> the transmission is silent. The stranger just stares at me. Uh, can we greet you? Identify yourself right I end this call. No, you're not. Why do you use that word at all? Friend. It's just a label, a pretense to make you feel better about being alone. Why are you contacting me anyway? Is Artemis behind this? I haven't changed my mind. I don't care if some dream say we are travelers. I'll meet them if I'm paid to meet them. Oh, so you're like a mercenary type. Even this conversation is, value, is a waste of valuable contract time. I tell Apollo that Artemis is in trouble, that they attempted to use a portal and became stranded on some distant and uncharted world, disappearing from the Hollow Terminus network. Apollo's demeanor changes. They appear uncomfortable at the news. Send me your data logs. Let me see this for myself. Apollo studies the log, pausing and replaying various segments of static and distortions. They turn to me with a glow of excitement. These noises. They sound just like the echoes of Sentinel events. You've seen them before, of course. Drones that appear from nowhere if you interfere with their precious planets. But this data is distorted, inverted. The Viking will pay hands and figure out how the Sentinels appear so quickly. And this recording of yours, the portals, perhaps they're with the key. Uh, life is worth more. You worried about Artemis? Don't worry. If we can figure this out, we can save them. So, what do you say? Do you want to work on this together? Be partners? Oh yeah, this is an awesome storyline. If you're going to work with me, your equipment needs to be in good condition. We can't have you dying out there. Not yet, at least. You can find Nanak clusters scattered in abandoned buildings and damaged machines. Ironically, really, they're the same structures that Sentinels destroyed that will lead to their deaths. Trade these Nanak clusters with merchants and space stations to get the blueprints you need. What blueprints do I need? As the, hollow, as the hologram recedes, Apollo's head turns to the side ever so slightly, as if sighing, saddened. Or perhaps
perhaps it was nothing. A ghost in the machine. Oh, it's so cool you used the home. <laughs> use the name. Oh, that's pretty nuts. Alright, let's go. Let's see what this mission is saying. You are not alone. I know you, traveler. I know where you've been. I know where you're going. There is no need to hurry. Who are you? You will find us when the time is right. Okay, because that's not creepy at all. Apollo, where you at, my guy? Oh, hey, now it's Apollo answering. Are you ready? Make sure you are. This job isn't going to be a small one. You might not be heading back to that base of yours for a while. Aw, oh, yeah! Space travel! Good. Let the hunt begin. I've detected a Corvax installation on that world of yours. The interference in your transmissions is a giveaway. It might be disguised in the style of another species, but don't be fooled. The synthetics delight in espionage. I mean, you're... I'm not robotic. I was born just like you. But this is no world for flesh. My brain, what organs I have left, everything was transferred to the shell. This is who I am. Wow. How this happened? I took my revenge when the time came. That's all you need to know. That is evolution. Like, at its finest. Apollo is actually pretty cool. Like, ten times cooler now. So, start from the hypothesis that the Sentinels use these portals to get around. How do they activate it? We need to observe them. We need to summon them. And what better way than to attack a Corvax factory? They're both robotic life forms. Too much in common. Too much coincidence. Enter the factory and hack the terminal within. If we gain the data about the Sentinels, good. If not, we'll have summoned enough to them to trace any energy spikes on that world of yours. The portals will be ours in no time. Alright, where are we going? Corvax facility. Over there. Oh, I should probably make... Oh, heck. Hold on. Before I go into this, I'm going to need to make some ammo. Uh, Alright, and we're in. Let's see what's going on. Output screen. I need chromatic metal. Sodium. And ferrite. Oh, heck. I need chromatic metal, sodium, and pure ferrite. Alrighty, so we're back here, and hopefully, if all goes well, we should be able to get everything done. That back in the exosuit. Yes, chromatic metal. Thing is, I only need, I think it was 25. Put in 30 just to be safe. Ah, it was 25. That fixes the boiler unit. I need to fix the output screen. All right, as soon as this is done, so the good news is not much longer. There we go. Let's go ahead and take these out into the exosuit and fix this. terminal houses a blueprint, an upgrade for my exosuit. However, I find a few clues for Apollo. It seems the Corvax within left this world many days ago, apparently recalled on a priority transmission from their species flotilla. Something has them worried. Let's probe the factory locks. This place seems to have been more than just a factory. It was a home to the Corvax who lived within its walls. It appears that they were experimenting with autonomy from their collective. Ooh, video feeds. One of the internal sensors has recorded movement within the facility. It shows me footage of the vents at my feet. There's something in here with me. Got a light on it? I shine a light upon it. It is a small hairy creature, shaking and afraid, 
and cries out. The animal appears to have lived here for quite some time. There is a nest in the corner, vestiges of food upon a small dish, even a few clumsy toys and trinkets. The animal seems to have been a companion to the Corvax. My scanner tells me that the creature is gravely ill. It will die, no matter what intervention occurs. I don't like doing that, but euthanize it as the creature looks up mournfully at me. I fire a single charge of my multi-tool. It shivers no more. Its suffering is at an end. I move on from the factory complex. Oh, that hurt my feels. But I would definitely do that. If the animal is gonna die regardless, then there's no reason to keep it alive and let it suffer through all that. So, better to put it down. What do you mean? Cannot collect. Oh, because my I'm full up, so I can't actually get any more fuel out either. Uh, the copper flower, the mordite. Just move this to the freighter, please. Oh, my freighter's full now too. That's awesome. Inventory full. Okay, awesome. What am I gonna do? Let's head over to Apollo. Gotta go back into space for this. All right, let's see what's going on with this guy. There we go, a leap in the dark. Good work. Your attack on that factory paid off. Did you get any useful data? Find out what's going on. I recorded countless signal flares when the sentinel started to appear. Energy streams sparked beneath the planet's surface, moving from monolith to monolith. We must be on the right track. Examine these structures. They're all linked. I know it. Good luck. I'll speak to you on the other side. All right. So now what do I do? Find the structure? The monolith? Yeah. Ley line link detected. What is a ley line? Hmm. Where is it? Oh, it's down here. <gasps> Ooh. Flamio Hotman, you say? It's on my base planet? Oh boy. I'll be there in 10 seconds, ladies and gents, so I will see you then. Alright, here we are at the ley line source. I wonder what this is. Are we actually going to start portaling around from planet to planet? That'd be pretty cool. Legacy of Urkada Gachi. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what to expect as I approach the structure. An army of sentinels, perhaps? Some gateway through which I'll find Artemis. But in the shifting structure of this monolith, I can feel something else. A story. A vision. It is already burning itself into my eyes. The Traveler. The Traveler worked beneath the shadow of a red star. Though through lonely... Mm. You know what, let me do that again. <clears throat> the Traveler woke beneath the shadow of a red star. Through the lonely cosmos they fled, yearning for a purpose and meaning. They found an anomaly, an aberration, a door into the heavens. No Gek, no Viking, no Corvax could see it. Only the Traveler could perceive the portal, though they did not know how to step through. They did not know the secret language, the glyphs. They did not yet grasp the price of the final truth. 
to witness this glyph. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see glyphs in my mind, part of a code I need to activate a portal. As I depart, I spot a sentinel drone in the distance. It moves away quickly. Hey, where'd you go, sentinel boy? Tracing to source. Okay, locate the next set of portal glyphs. I actually think we had spotted a glyph a couple episodes ago when apparently there was a dead traveler and in their gravestone was a glyph. Oh, that's on the other side of this mountain. Let's not crash right into that. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, have I used these? Maybe not. That'd be really convenient if I haven't. New ones. Knowledge stone. My keen word for heavy. Ooh. Oh, I like this song. Keep in mind, the mix has apparently changed up a bit. New songs have been added. So some of these songs I've never heard of, and this right now, whatever's playing, I love it. Dreams of Nipem. As I approach the structure, I feel that same burning sensation in my eyes. There is nothing to read, and yet I am more aware of these words than anything I have ever known. Activate it. The Sin. The Traveler found a way. They always did. The first drone screamed when it was cut open. Within the shattered memories of the Sentinels, the Traveler found the glyphs they needed. They passed through the gateway, emerging before the face of omnipotence. The Traveler asked Atlas how many worlds were left to visit. They had seen so many in their life, they did not wish to die before they saw them all. And the Atlas answered, 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,616 planets. More than could ever be seen in any lifetime. It was impossible to explore the universe before the traveler died. Which is a straight up fact. Even if you were to travel at like literally blink into existence on each planet just long enough to have the game registered as them being discovered it would still take just the one person to see all those planets more than i think it was like two three million years i'll have a little factoid about it later i am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler i see glyphs in my mind part of the code i need to activate the portal i think of atlas i've encountered this time this name many times in my travels yet its true nature still eludes me the vision fills me with fear Ooh, the final portal glyphs. All right, so what we're going to do for this episode is we're going to get the last portal glyphs and then call it a day. Because I don't want this episode going super, super long, but I would hate to do, like, if I was watching this myself, I would hate to do this, like, start this long chain of events and not at least get to the end. Or at least to the next cliffhanger. Because <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to be the actual end end of the story. It's sure it's going to be, like, connect all the ley lines and then find all the glyphs to the portals and then transport yourself somewhere else and then find all the ley lines there like two or three times. I'm sure that's what it's gonna be. But I at least wanna connect these ley lines. Whoa, 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 Jesus. Why did I just like nosedive into the ground there? All right, so let's go ahead and do this last one for now. Boop. By keen word for bless. Bless up, fam. Oh, I don't know what you're saying. Everything here is tinted with that same red. The same unobservable crimson that fills my vision when I blink. I can only hope that this structure holds the final glyphs. That my trial at these ruins is nearly over. The Purpose of Infinity The Atlas told the Traveler that they were the first of their kind. That a multitude would follow. Each would be endowed with the same noble soul, each able to travel from planet to planet in eternal solitude. The first traveler rejected the gift of Atlas. 
This world was not what they had hoped for. What was the purpose of infinity if you could not see it all? If you were alone, if you would one day die. The first traveler cursed Atlas, claiming that we would find a way to survive no matter the cost. All of these words, all of time itself, would be for the travelers to witness. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see glyphs in my mind, the final portion of a code I need to activate a portal. That's actually rather deep. Because I, I honestly do feel like that sometimes. What is the point of having space travel and all these universe, all the stuff in the universe to our disposal to witness if we can't actually get to all of it? It makes it kind of pointless. Alright. But we're going to leave the episode off here. In the next episode, we'll go to the portal and we'll see what happens. But other than that, guys, I hope you liked today's episode of Let's Chill No Man's Sky. I know it wasn't the chillest in the beginning because I was ranting um, about how much my job sucks. But I have to do that every once in a while or else I'm going to go crazy. Hey, <laughs> hey, fun times. Other than that, guys, I hope to catch you all here next time on Let's Chill No Man's Sky. I'm loving the mix again. So, of course, you know, music's going to be back to the chill stuff. And we'll be enjoying ourselves once more. Other than that, guys, if you liked today's episode, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. Join the Curly Crew. That way you guys are already up to date on whenever I drop a new episode. Other than that, guys, I hope to catch you all here next time. I hope you all have a great and wonderful day.